You know, right now in financial planning, we're sort of at this influx, I guess this inflection point that I'm really excited to sort of see where it goes from here. Financial planning is, we've been stuck for a long time. We haven't had a lot of true innovation or disruption over the last really 10, 20 years in financial planning. And I think over the next couple of years, we're about to get 20 years of change in only a matter of a year or two. And so I'm excited to sort of see where things go from here because I think a lot is going to change very rapidly uh, in a very short amount of time. One of the big pieces is just technology. Technology is finally coming into uh, financial planning. This is gonna be a major shift for advisors that they're going to have more access to technology that they can easily adapt, that they can easily implement, that really helps them to scale their firm and run it more efficiently. The other major shift that, that we foresee coming is that advisors are gonna start being forced to specialize. And this is something that we've always wanted to be master generalists, that we were the, uh, you know, we sort of serve individuals, families, and business owners and women, is, it was on our website. And it's not gonna work going forward because especially younger clients, as they're looking for an advisor, they're looking for a specialist. They're looking for the advisor that can best serve their needs and not just the advisor that lives closest to them because thanks to technology, they now can access an advisor that lives across the, uh, you know, across the country. I think the expectation is that they get access to real technology. So, you know, these clients use Uber, they use Airbnb to book hotels, you know, they're using Uber to call a cab. They no longer have to, you know, literally call a phone to order a cab. The same way with financial planning, they don't, they, they're not gonna come into our office. They don't expect quarterly reports to get mailed. They want on-demand information they want on-demand uh, communication with their advisor. They want to be able to see their financial plan on an ongoing basis. I think the other piece too is that they're no longer retirement centric, especially younger clients. They're not coming in saying, how long until I can quit working and never work another day in, in my life? They're asking, how do I enjoy my life now? How do I take advantage of life while also saving for the future and also planning for the future? And so the conversations that they're having with advisors and the center focus is no longer this retirement date that may or may not happen, you know, 40 years down the line from now. It's really about how can I live my great life and how do I use my finances to support that great life? Uh, which is gonna be a, a massive shift in conversation that advisors are having with their clients. We have a massive shortage of young planners coming into the financial services industry. I mean, when we look at uh, you know the, the close to 10,000 advisors every year that could be retiring because the average age of advisors in their 50s, I think 57 years old right now, uh, we have more CFPs over 70 than under 30 currently. And so if we lose five to 10,000 advisors a year to retirement, we're only graduating 3,000 CFPs every year. We have a massive shortage of young talent, and this is a problem that we have to solve in the industry. Otherwise, uh, we can't even serve the existing client base, much less be able to truly open up financial planning to a client base that uh, really hasn't been served before. That's that under one million net worth uh, or investable asset client. Uh, so I think that the, this is a problem that the, the associations and CFP board, uh, really the industry as a whole, TD Ameritrade, is going to have to, to come together and figure out how do we educate young people on the career of financial planning, that this is an amazing profession. You know, my definition of financial planning uh, is that we get to help clients live great lives. And there, there aren't very many professions that get to say that. We have a huge, it, it's such an honor to be able to do the work that we do. And we have such a, just such a great profession and it's such a flexible career and you can make uh, significantly more than the industry average. We have all the things that you're looking for in a career and yet when young people think about financial planning, they think, I don't want to do door-to-door -door insurance sales. And I'm thinking, I wouldn't want to do that either. I didn't want to do that when I got into financial planning. I wanted to do real financial planning. So educating even high schoolers and in the college programs to be able to say, this is what real financial planning is. This is what a career really looks like. I think we'll go a long way, uh, but it's going to take a concerted effort over the next 10 to 15 years to truly recruit enough young talent into financial planning. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna have a major issue in terms of staffing. So financial, the, the conversations that advisors are having with their clients is changing. It's a lot different than it used to be. We've always been retirement centric as financial advisors. We wanted to think about what happens in 30 or 40 years whenever I've retired and I never work another day in my life. And for young clients, we've watched our parents and grandparents sort of plan on that, and it never really worked out the way that, that we hoped. Either they retired with pensions that had no money in them, or uh, you know they honestly just didn't save enough and realized that you can't just stop working at age 65. Or we also watched them not enjoy their life up until retirement. They worked in a job that they didn't like for decades until they could finally one day retire and be excited about it. 
young clients are looking for the opportunity to enjoy life now as well as in the future. And financial planners, you know, up until this point, haven't really been having those conversations with young clients, but now all of a sudden it is changing. We need to be prepared to talk about how do we enjoy life today, not just in the future. You know, we look at New York Times bestseller is the four hour work week. And when you look at, you know, how can we, uh, you know, work four hours a week and still be successful? That's a, it's a bestseller because millennials are reading that and they're asking this question, how can I uh, live my life and enjoy my life? Maybe I, don't, maybe I work more than four hours a week, but the, the, the tenets of that book are really, how do I enjoy life today and take advantage of what life has to offer today and leverage my money to be successful and be happy and, and contribute to philanthropic causes and, and donate my time while also planning for the future. And it's a more holistic conversation that the younger clients are really looking for from their advisor.